we already discussed why you should start applying digital dentistry. Now let's take a closer look at specific problems digital dentistry may solve for you, as dentistry is about solving problems for our patients, isn't it? But how will a seamless digital workflow benefit your day-to-day -day work? In today's session, we're tackling five relevant issues in traditional analog dentistry that resonate with many of us, dentists, technicians, and patients alike. Up until five years ago, when still working analog, we had to battle a lot of problems we did not have any solution for. Maybe you know some of them too. Problem number one. Our clinical Facebook transfer records are often inconsistent and incomplete. The second issue is that insufficient diagnostics lead to suboptimal treatment planning, limiting our treatment execution and the final results. The third problem is the challenge of dealing with poor occlusal lab designs that do not feel natural for our patients. This brings us to problem number four, time-consuming occlusal adjustments in order to achieve an acceptable occlusion. This may ultimately lead to our last problem we're going to talk about, ceramic failures. And I'm sure every one of you knows how a chipped, cracked or failed ceramic restoration looks like. Today, with digital dentistry, I'm confident to say that we do not have to deal with these kind of problems anymore. Let's dive into the details of each problem and look at the potential of a digital solution for each and every one of them. The first significant hurdles we encounter in dental practice are inconsistent and incomplete clinical records. Defining hinge axis and centric relation with a face bow usually show poor reproducibility, resulting in low predictability of outcome. I often struggled defining those two precisely, as my results remained unpredictable when trying to attach heavy pieces of rigid materials on the patient's head. We want to capture natural movements and delicate reference points from our patients to be transferred to an articulator. But how is a metal device like this one going to represent mother nature? One transfer record resulted in a perfect fit of restorations for my patient, while other restorations did not fit as expected. Sometimes the occlusal plane wasn't quite right, but tilted, and sometimes the bite was incorrect. This refers to the maxillomandibular relationship, which meant, in a worst case scenario, I had to book in my patient again. In general, these problems aren't sporadic. Studies have shown that the average reproducibility of a Facebook transfer record is around 70%, even in the most experienced hands. That means one out of three records is incorrect. By transferring this incorrect information to the lab, you may get beautiful ceramic work back for trying, but you would have to adjust and grind down those beautiful restorations to make them somehow fit. And in a worst case, you would even have to redo the whole work. Now, the underneath lying issue has been identified, and that is to be aware of those traditional limitations of accurately transferring congular positions and of capturing natural jaw movements. Analog articulators, despite the best efforts, are unable to reproduce the nuanced movement characteristics of every individual human being, our patients. But what is the alternative? Good news is that digital acquisition of motion data by using motion tracking devices do offer a powerful solution. These devices can precisely track jaw movements and convert this information into digital files. Those can be seamlessly integrated with our intraoral scans to empower an ideal lab design of our restorations. To sum it up, this technology ensures both accurate and consistent clinical records by providing true and reproducible records of our patients' jaw movements. And it also allows for a correct 3D positioning of the scans of upper and lower jaw with reference to the patient's face. And therefore, both articulator and face bar limitations belong to the past. Insufficient diagnostics and treatment planning often lead to underdiagnosed conditions, limiting successful patient treatment and outcomes. But why does this shortfall occur? 
Primarily, it originates from a lack of comprehensive data, restricting our visibility and diagnoses of each patient's unique condition. And mind you, it's not just the complex cases that are suffering from underdiagnoses. Sometimes simply failing restorations can keep us busy, but should be easily avoided. However, the transition to digital dentistry is like gaining better eyesight and sharpen your view, revealing so much more information. By collecting detailed digital data, we can create a realistic digital avatar of our patients. This avatar reveals previously hidden details, enabling us to define more accurate diagnoses and more efficient treatment plans. Furthermore, when a digital lab can also access and work on this digital avatar, the exchange of thoughts and collaboration between dentist and technician is intensified. As a team, you can explore and refine solutions within computer softwares, ultimately streamlining the process to perfection before any physical work begins in the patient's mouth. You can use this workflow with ease for mock-ups, prep guides, memo bytes, etc. And therefore precision, predictability and efficiency will increase tremendously. It is just so much fun to know before you even start treating the patient that you will be successful at the end of the day and treatment because you've done your homework in digital treatment planning. Suffering from poor lab designs of ceramic restorations is a common problem. This is mainly due to physical limitations of conventional impressions and the subsequent misinterpretation by lab technicians. These designs fail to capture the natural shape of occlusal surfaces and also of a natural feel for the patient, usually requiring occlusal adjustments. The crux of the problem lies in the translation of inaccurate analog impressions with flexible impression materials and expanding plaster during the setting process. These minor errors accumulate into physical inaccuracies of your restorations. So these restorations may not represent precise occlusal relationships and aesthetic requirements as desired and needed for a restitutio ad integrum. The integration of real patient movements in the design process of your restorations is an absolute game changer because motion data helps you to abandon all these limitations we just talked about. Note how the design, shape, and occlusal context profoundly change once the individual set of data, patient-specific, is applied in the lab design software. This transformative technology provides an unprecedented level of accuracy and nativeness by capturing and reproducing natural jaw movements and occlusal relationships. As a result, restorations designed by applying motion data closely mimic very natural function and aesthetics and therefore reduce the need for occlusal adjustments post-cementation. Choosing a lab that can process and apply digital information and motion data does make a significant change for you. It tremendously raises your standard of patient care and it will boost your patient's satisfaction. The clinical process of manual occlusal adjustments is fraught with challenges, most notably they are tricky to perform precisely in the patient's mouth and they are also time consuming for everyone involved. Occlusal adjustments are exposing the ceramic material to a lot of stress. Those adjustments are already changing in ideal cusp to fissure relationship and occlusion for the worse. Let's also be aware that an increased chair set time is limiting our patient's satisfaction and it is also decreasing our productivity as practitioners. The integration of motion data technology into dental practices and digital labs offers a viable solution. Motion data is allowing precise digital modifications to be made in the design software prior to the fabrication process of all ceramic restorations. This approach streamlines the production process of ideal restorations and it significantly reduces our GSI time. Therefore, increasing the efficiency of your dental practice and digital lab. With restorations that fit accurately right from the start upon try-in, there is no need for hassling and time-consuming manual adjustments anymore. In our clinical reality, an ideal lab design results in minimal, if any, occlusal adjustments and therefore a reduced chair side time. Just think about your opportunities and what you could do with this extra time. 
Ceramic failures, including chips, cracks or fatal fractures, are still a major problem in dental practice. Not only do these failures cause frustration for the practitioner and patient, but they also require costly and time-consuming rework. And what should bother us even more is that traditional methods often fail to address the root cause of these failures, namely inappropriate load distribution on the ceramic materials during function in the patient's mouth instead of striving for an ideal ceramic design before the production and cementation process. And remember, our options for adequate occlusal adjustments are limited. So an ideal digital lab design powered by motion data is key to success and provides a significant advancement in minimizing any type of failure. By enabling precise digital try-ins and adjustments prior to cementation in the patient's mouth, this technology ensures that all restorations are ideally designed and optimally adapted to each patient's unique anatomical features and dental physiognomy. Our 4D digital approach allows us to see and understand more about design and shape of any type of restoration by providing patients movements. Incorporating these movements in our design and production process allows us to create highly aesthetically pleasing results that are also functionally durable in the long run. So everyone is happy. By addressing these five major problems with digital dentistry, we can enhance the quality of care for our patients, streamline our workflows, and improve overall outcomes and quality of life for our patients. Sounds too good to be true? It isn't. The reality is this. Our 4D workflow is highly predictable and precise enough to allow for cementing or ceramic restorations upon try-in. This is obviously a great leap forward in saving time and boosting efficiency for us and for our patients. Now, I might sound like a sales manager for digital products, but here's the truth. Like you, I'm treating patients every day, balancing my appointment book with all different types of requests, trying to make sure that both practice and digital lab are running smoothly. What I'm sharing with you isn't just chit chat. It's my day-to-day -day routine and clinical reality tested and proven. And from my experience, half-hearted attempts at going digital just don't cut it. When mixing analog steps in a digital workflow, you lose precision and predictability. Just to give you an example, scanning a plaster model or using printed models in an articulator is not working digital. Or having to take an additional conventional impression on top of your scans to provide accuracy for the restorations provided by any lab throws away a lot of potential of the digital workflow. Transforming to fully digital can be a challenging process, but once you have figured it out, you will experience a continuous improvement. That's why you should consider to team up with a digital lab that is able to put the digital pieces together for you. Most important, this new way of dentistry can add so much fun to your daily routines for you, your team, and above all, for your patients. So tell us, do you have similar or different problems with analog dentistry? And how do you tackle these problems? Leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe if you like to learn more. See you soon.